All right, so here it is, the Cambridge CXA81 Integrated Amplifier. And this is a product that's geared more towards a serious listener because at $1,299, or you know what, let's just round up and call it $1,300, it's not exactly expensive by audiophile standards, but it's definitely not inexpensive in the overall sense. I mean, this is a serious piece of audio kit. And I think the big story so far is how much praise the 81 has received, not just from consumers, but also from members of the press. In fact, what Hi-Fi feels that the 81 sets a new standard in performance for integrated amps at this price range. And they even gave it the 2019 Product of the Year Award. Finally got the words out of my mouth. And they're not the only ones. Most publications who review this integrated amplifier really love it. So I'm excited to share my thoughts with you all on this piece. But first, as usual, we're gonna quickly go over what you get with this product. So let's start off with the aesthetic. It has a very clean, minimalist aesthetic, just like most other Cambridge Audio pieces. In fact, the only thing providing color is this sticker that's still on the unit because quite frankly, this isn't my property and I don't wanna take it off. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over the features from left to right on the front of the panel here. So on the very left, we have our power on button. You hit that and you're gonna notice this blue and kind of bluish whitish text in the front, very understated. We have a one eighth headphone jack. I had to think about that for a second. And as usual, I don't know what the output power is to the headphone jack because no company likes advertising that. To the left panel here, we have a cluster that is for our analog inputs. You just select the input that you wanna use. In the middle, we have our AB switch. And then to the right, we have our digital switches as well as a button for Bluetooth. This is gonna be our volume control. And that is gonna be it, guys. This is a very minimalist integrated amplifier, but there's still gonna be some features in it that some of you may find interesting. So let's turn it around and talk about it. Oh, almost forgot. It also comes with this remote control. Now let's move on. All right, so here's the back of the 81. And I gotta say, this feels like a proper British component because a lot of the inputs and outputs are on the opposite end of where I'm used to them being. But you know what? We're still gonna move forward with going over things from the left to the right. So on the very left, as opposed to the right, we have our IEC inlet for the power cord. And then focusing on the top row, we have a bunch of different inputs and outputs. This is gonna be for custom install use, which is a very clever thing for them to include. Then moving over to the right, this is where you put your antenna for Bluetooth streaming. I didn't test out what streaming is like on this unit because I just don't stream music, but it does use Aptex HD and apparently it sounds really, really good through this unit. Almost all the feedback I've read so far has been nothing but very positive. To the right, we have a USB input. So this uses an ESS 9016 DAC, which is a huge upgrade over the Wolfson DAC that they were using before. And believe it or not, yes, I did test it out and it is good. It has a very clear sound to it. Is it as good as the topping E30 that I reviewed a couple weeks ago? No, but for something that's built into an integrated amp at this price, it's pretty satisfying. We also have this very clever ground lift switch, which I think is such a smart touch for them. We have a coax input, two optical inputs, and then focusing on the bottom row here, we have a set of balanced inputs, which is nice. And then we have one, two, three, four regular analog inputs. Don't get confused by this unbalanced text right here. I mean, single-ended is inherently unbalanced, so this is just a normal input. We have a pre-out. You can run this to either a separate amplifier or a subwoofer, and then we have a dedicated mono sub-out. We also have our speaker terminals. You'll notice that you can run A or B or both at the same time. And this is an important time to note that the power output of the 81 is 80 watts into 8 ohms and 120 watts into 4 ohms. So you're going to get all of that power if you're just connecting them to one set of speakers. However, if you're going to use A and B at the same time, that's when you're going to have the power roughly in half. So anyways, that's going to be it for the back of the unit. So now let's take a peek on the inside and then I'm going to talk about how it sounds. So uh, this is embarrassing. I wasn't able to get the lid off the 81. And if ever you needed proof that my videos are raw, unscripted and filmed in sequential order, I mean, this is it. So here's what's going on. The lid fits very snugly to the chassis. And when you follow it, everything looks normal, right? It's along the top of the unit, along the side, but then 
it goes beneath the unit and on top of this metal plate. Now I took out all the screws relating to the lid, but I just couldn't get it open. And quite frankly, guys, I could email Cambridge about it, but it'll likely be a week until I get instructions on what to do. And I just don't feel like delaying the review for that long just for this shot, nor do I feel like spending hours disassembling this thing again for the shot. The bottom line is that there are plenty of pictures available if you wanna check out the inside of the unit. What I can say though is that through the ventilation, you can see the large toroidal transformer in the center of the unit, which is actually a pretty smart placement. It helps to keep the noise isolated from the rest of the circuit. It's surrounded by heat sinks, and plus, a side benefit is all the weight is concentrated in the center. I do know that there's an Alps potentiometer for the volume control, which is fairly decent. And otherwise, guys, I wish I could show you the inside, but uh, you know what? It is what it is. We move on. So now, let's talk about how it actually performs. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time here because when you get right down to it, the CXA81 has such a distinct sound that as I begin to describe it to you all, it's not going to take a whole lot of time to figure out whether or not this is something that interests you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by saying this. If you're in the market for a solution at this price point and you're of the mindset that the mark of a good hi-fi component is one that can pass the signal from point A to point B with as little coloration as possible, then there's a good chance you're not gonna like the 81 because it is on the opposite end of that goal. This is a product that has a very distinct character and is meant to engage you emotionally versus intellectually. So when you sit down and you listen to the 81, I think the first thing people are gonna notice is that character. The treble, for example, is going to be elevated. It's gonna be boosted up. It's not gonna be neutral. It's not gonna be rolled off. There's gonna be a distinct amount of high frequency information that's designed to give the music just a little bit of energy and allow you to hear detail even at low volumes. And then you have the mid range and the bass, which takes on a warm, rich and slightly organic tone. And when you add it all together, you get something that's meant to be fun to listen to over many hours of time. So instead of doing what I normally do at this point, which is to go into even more detail about the treble, the mid range and the bass, instead, I'm just gonna give you the general highlights of what the 81 brings to the table, and then I'm gonna go over the cons. So the highlights, I would say the first thing is, believe it or not, the imaging. Now this is something that I rarely talk about in my component reviews because usually they don't have much of an influence over imaging. Usually that's in the domain of the loudspeaker, but that's not the case in the 81. Every single speaker that I connected to this integrated amplifier had the same exact benefit, which was it allowed the speakers to lay down a huge sound stage. And on top of that, it also allowed the speakers to produce a rock solid image in between them. I tell you what, it's really, really cool. So if you're really big into sound staging, you're gonna love the 81. And now let's talk about the overall voicing. So you have this warm, rich character, and what this does is this helps to give the sound some density, some weight behind it. I mean, it sounds really full. So if you're running small bookshelf speakers and you kind of want them to sound a little larger than what they are, the 81 will likely do that. Or if you're running bigger tower speakers and you kind of wish they would sound as full range as they should be, there's a good chance the 81 can help them along. And it's cool to have that kind of sound coming from an integrated amp that's relatively small. And then speaking of sound, there's going to be something that's very difficult to describe and that is Pratt or pace, rhythm, and timing. And I think the best way to describe it is, you know when you go to a live performance and it just seems like the musicians are having a great day. Everybody's in sync with one another. The rhythm is incredible. Everybody's hitting their notes. That's what it's like listening to the 81. It's like all the music that you're listening to is just perfectly in sync. The timing is just absolutely right. It just feels natural. So it's just, what it basically means is just, just fun to listen to regardless of the kind of music that you enjoy for long periods of time. And then lastly, there's gonna be the built-in DAC. Most DACs that are built into integrated amplifiers like this, they're an afterthought. It's a convenience feature. It's usually not designed to sound very good, but that's not the case here. The ESS Sabre DAC typically has that dry, thin, yet very clear sound. And I feel like when you couple that with the natural, warm and organic and lively sound of the 81, it makes for a great match. Now, can you get a better experience if you were to buy a more expensive separate DAC? Yeah, absolutely. But I don't feel like that's necessary with the 81, which is something I can't say for a lot of integrated amplifiers at this price. So 
what are the cons then? Well, I would say the first con is going to be when you have a product that has a very distinct sound, sometimes it can homogenize the listening experience, meaning that eventually it'll sound like everything has been recorded and mixed down through a Cambridge 81 at some point in its lifespan or so at some point during the recording process. I don't think it's going to be a deal killer for a lot of people, but it's something worth mentioning. And then there's going to be dynamic and power output. So I think the power output's really good. I think it'll fuel most speakers fairly well. And I think the dynamic output is really good, but I've read the other reviews, so I want to set realistic expectations here, specifically when it comes to dynamics. If you're running difficult to drive speakers, which I would define as 89 dB in power sensitivity and maybe a four ohm load, dynamic output's gonna be okay. It's not gonna be really all too great. But if you're running, say, 90 dB efficient speakers, with uh, I'd say eight ohm load nominal, then you know what, actually dynamic output's gonna be pretty good. And then lastly, let's just address the elephant in the room. Some people are gonna be disappointed that it doesn't come with tone controls. I don't care, it seems like that was their vision for the 81. Um, but a lot of people may be disappointed with the lack of phono stage. But I think that this was a conscious decision. I think Cambridge sat down and they said, hey, look, most people consume media via digital, so let's just go ahead and put our money into a much better DAC than the previous generation. Um, let's give the Bluetooth just a little bit of love since that's how a lot of people listen. And we're just gonna have to sacrifice the phono stage in this whole process. Obviously for some people it's gonna be a deal killer, but I think they made the right choice. But again, that's just gonna be my take. Anyways, the Cambridge, 81. I mean, it is a fun and engaging to listen to integrated amp, and I can see why a lot of people really like it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to transition over into telling you what I ran into when it comes to pairing it up with different speakers and the overall advice I would give for people who are seriously considering this. Okay, so when it comes to speaker matching, I need to first get this out of the way. The 81 is one of those integrated amplifiers to where I feel it can be a little bit difficult to predict what it's going to pair up well with and what it won't pair up well with. So what I'm about to say is definitely not the gospel. It just reflects more of my own personal observation. So first, let me start off with the two types of speakers that I wouldn't pair up to the 81, and then I'll end this on more of a positive note. So there's basically two types of speakers, the first being speakers that already sound bright to your ears. And I think in my experience, I would hesitate to pair them up with something like Focal or B&W or Monitor Audio that already kind of has that sharp top end. Don't get me wrong. I think the rest of the 81's presentation would actually complement those speakers very well. But if you feel like the treble is just already a little too forward for your taste, I don't think the 81 is really going to help you in that regard. And remember, there's no tone controls. So it's just something you have to try and see for yourself. And then next, it's going to be speakers that use thick woofers that really need a lot of control in order to get them to sound as quick and as natural as they could be. Two examples being the Polk Audio LSIM series. That usually benefits from an amplifier that will have a higher damping factor. And the same goes with the Bacart Audio S400s. I'm not saying it sounds bad. It's just it could be too much of a good thing. Maybe just a little too much warmth within the mid-range and especially the bass. But now let's talk about the positives. So I feel like outside of those two types of speakers, everything else should be fairly good. I mean, it has, as I mentioned before, good power behind it. I mean, yeah, if you're in a huge room and you're listening to low sensitivity speakers at loud volumes, then yeah, you may need either a more powerful integrated amp or a separate amplifier to go with it. For most people, I think the power is not gonna be much of a concern. And I would say the ideal speaker with the 81 would be something that's a little bit more neutrally voiced and or maybe something that's even just a little bit rolled off and can use just a little bit more energy on top. I think that would make for an excellent pairing. So anyways, guys, that's going to be it. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to go over some comparisons with you all and then I'm going to wrap this whole review up. Okay, so first things first, since I just reviewed the Cambridge AXR100 stereo receiver, I'm sure there's at least a couple people out there who would like to know how it competes against a much more expensive CXA81. But before I begin, try to ignore the severe color differences between both of these units. They're actually much more closely matched in person. It's just a result of the lighting. Anyways, about the performance. Believe it or not, the stereo receiver has a couple advantages. Number one, it is technically more powerful. Now, 
the power differences really don't manifest themselves in the real world, but it's still a technicality worth noting. But then number two, the receiver has more of a laid back, easy going sound and the treble is going to be smoother and more forgiving. So if you listen to predominantly poorly recorded material, there's a good chance that you're gonna actually prefer the sound of the receiver over the integrated amp. But when you switch over to the 81, there's gonna be obvious differences. Starting with the treble, the treble's gonna be a lot more expressive. There's gonna be a lot more energy on top. That's gonna to give you the perception of more detail. Then there's gonna be the mid-range and the bass. While both units have a rich and warm character, the integrated amplifier is just gonna be even more detailed and it's just gonna sound more realistic for lack of a better word. And then you're gonna have the image that comes from the 81 that you don't quite get with the stereo receiver. So overall, the 81 is the better sounding unit, but which one's best for you is gonna actually depend on the type of recordings that you listen to. Okay, so next let's talk about how the CXA81 stacks up to more of a natural competitor. I'm talking about the Marantz PM8006. Now I don't have the unit in my house right now to put on top of this and to show you all, but I'm nonetheless super familiar with it. And the comparison goes like this. They're both very different units. I mean, on one hand, the Marantz has more features, but when it comes to sound quality, they're gonna to appeal to different people because the Cambridge, as said throughout this review, has a very distinct sound. Boosted up treble, that warm and rich character throughout the mid-range and the bass, whereas Marantz is going for something that's more linear sounding. They want better balance between the treble, the mid-range and the bass. They want tighter bass, which is what they achieve. And the treble is going to be a little less aggressive and in your face. So it really just depends on what you want. Do you wanna have this kind of lively, warm and rich listening experience or do you wanna have something that's a little bit more balanced, maybe just a little less in your face on the top end and a little bit more controlled on the bottom end? What do you want? Both of them are gonna be very good units, but uh, it's a very even match in that regard. So now let's move on to the last comparison. Okay, so lastly, let's go over how the 81 competes against the IOTA VX stack because I'm sure there's a lot of people who are going to want to know about that. But first, let's actually talk about the SA3 integrated amplifier because even though it's less than half the price, it actually has some advantages. Like the Marantz, it's going for more of a balanced presentation. So the mid-range, the treble, the bass is more seamlessly integrated through the SA3. The top end isn't gonna be as expressive as the 81, but it's also gonna be just a little more forgiving. And the bass, believe it or not, is gonna be a little more controlled through the SA3. However, the 81 is gonna have a number of advantages. So if you like that more lively top end, you're gonna get that out of the 81. And then there's gonna be the sense of scale, the fullness of sound that you get out of the 81 that you won't get out of the SA3 by itself. So the mid range sounds larger, bass is gonna be stronger, maybe not as tight and as controlled, but overall you just get this bigger sense of scale. And of course there's gonna be the imaging. This will help speakers again to lay down a wider soundstage. But the big question is what happens when you add the PA3 and then use this as a stack? I don't think it's the most fair comparison because now we're talking about a preamp amp combo versus just an integrated amp. But for the sake of comparisons, what you get is something that's interesting because now they actually start to sound more similar to one another than different. The advantages of the treble with the SA3 still mostly remain, although when you add both of these components together as a stack, as I said in my dedicated review, it does liven up the top end a bit. So it's not quite as smooth, although I would say it's not quite as forward sounding as the Cambridge still. The mid range is where things get really interesting because now you get that bigger sense of scale. It's very, very similar to the Cambridge in that regard. I would say the mid range on the IOTA VX stack is slightly cleaner sounding then through to Cambridge, maybe just a little bit more honest, a little bit more truer to the recording. And then you have bass that's gonna be stronger than the uh, Cambridge integrated amplifier and it's gonna be even more controlled. However, the Cambridge is still gonna lay down a wider soundstage. And I don't feel like the IOTA VX quite has that thing that I mentioned earlier, which is that Pratt to where it just sounds like the music is being timed perfectly. Don't get me wrong, I think both components are musical, but I do think the Cambridge, subjectively speaking, has just a little bit more of that foot tapping factor than the IOTA VX stack. And of course the Cambridge has better built-in features 
even though this has tone controls, the DAC inside the Cambridge is significantly better than the Wolfson DAC inside the SA3 and the Bluetooth, even though I don't stream, I have it on pretty good authority that the Bluetooth through the Cambridge is gonna be significantly better than what you get with the IOTA VX stack. So it really just depends on what you're going for. So that's gonna be my take on comparisons and that's all the comparisons I have for you guys. So now let's wrap this whole review up. So, final thoughts on the Cambridge CXA81 integrated amplifier. First, let's go ahead and get this out of the way. Do I feel like it sets whole new standards in performance for something at its price point? Well, to me, the answer is no, because there are so many excellent components out there for in and around the same amount of money. But that doesn't mean I feel like it's average or even below average. In fact, I think it's really good. It has a very engaging and musical sound to it. It has good power. And plus, there's actually high quality features built inside of the integrated that actually sound good, unlike many other integrateds at the price to where companies just throw everything into a box just to make people happy. So ultimately though, it's up to you to decide what's gonna work with you and what won't. Hopefully this review will at least set the appropriate expectation. And the cool news is, at least if you're in North America, both Cambridge and a couple of the retailers offer an at-home 60-day trial period. So you can buy it, bring it home, listen to it in your system for two months before making a decision as to whether or not it's gonna be good for you over the long haul. So if you're in the US and you think this is something that would be good for you, take advantage of that. Anyways, guys, that is going to be my take on the CXA81. As always, thanks for tuning in, and until next time, peace.